Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. Hey, Steve! Been in the right place at the right time, been lucky. I got a phone call from John Belushi, and he was in New York. And I had met him. He didn't know me, but I had met him. I met him at a Paul McCartney party. And he was, uh, Paul hired him to do that imitation of Joe Cocker that he was real good at. Mm -hmm. And he had done it that night, and he was outside smoking a cigarette, and I walked up and introduced myself. And he didn't know me from Adam. So when he called me, he didn't even remember that. I'd, I talked to him about it later, and he said, I remember being at the party. Okay, that was a party in L.A. and That's where I first met John Belushi. Well, he had to talk to uh, Phil Walden, who was Otis's manager, to ask about me. And he said, you know, I'm putting a band together. And, I, you know, he said, I've been hearing a lot about this guy named Steve Carpenter. He said, great. And he said, he didn't have long hair, does he? And Phil <laughs> said, well, yeah, he does. He said, oh, that guy's not a guitar player. He's a roadie. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Much the way I thought about Otis when the first time I saw him, I thought he was a roadie because he came up driving a car. Right. I just thought he was a valet or, you know, whatever you call a roadie. And uh, anyway, they finally convinced him. And he, one of his opening things was he says, I understand you don't get along with Duck Dunn too well. He just said it as a joke. He oh. knew better. Oh. So that, and I knew it too. And we both started laughing at him. But the first time he called me in the studio, I was in the middle of mixing, and I had given the girls instructions up front. If I'm mixing, don't give me any phone calls. Just take the numbers down and give it to me when I get through. And she thought, because it was John Belushi, that it was okay. And I thought, I said, there's only one guy that, it, that was in L.A., that if he calls, let him back through. But he'd always say, hey, this is Stevie Wonder, or hey, this is President so-and-so, or hey, this so on. They said, Cropper. John Belushi. I just hung up on him. <laughs> but two seconds later, the phone rings again. No, it's John Belushi. Really, don't hang up. Don't hang up. <laughs> so I thought it was my friend Alan wanting to take me to lunch because uh -huh. I didn't have time. But it wasn't. It was actually John Belushi. So what had a bigger impact? Uh, or was the original Soul Man or the Blues Brothers? Well, I don't know. On your life? Well, probably the original, I would think. And uh, I had the idea because... What they wanted to do probably would have made it anyway, I don't know. But it was basically all slow, kind of medium tempo blues songs. Nothing wrong with blues songs. But there was nothing in there commercial to dance to. So at the end of the rehearsal one day, I said, John, why don't you do something you can dance to? And he goes, like what? And I said, well, like Sam and Dave. He said, well, I don't know any of their songs. And I looked at Paul Schaefer and I said, you remember Soul Man? And I just hit it. And they started dancing, going crazy and singing. So when they get through with it, everybody's laughing and having a big time because <laughs> Ackroyd comes out there doing his crazy leg stuff. And uh, he turns around to me, John does, he said, Steve, I love that song, but it's too high for me. I can't sing it. I just dropped it down. And I've been, we've been playing it there ever since. I thought everybody knew Soul Man. Well, everybody might, but they don't know it in the key we do it.